think it's the beginning of the age of Bitcoin and the return of gold. Yeah, I don't doubt that one bit because we have now the deglobalization and de-dollarization, which will be superseded by the age of individual sovereignty. And the way to fund that is through Bitcoin. If you have your keys, it's unconfiscatable and it's hard money. So this is the first time ever in the history of humans that you've had an unconfiscatable hard money available to individuals. And this will give rise to a globe of individually sovereign individuals. The nation state will subside and the role of fiat money will collapse and we'll have a new era. Yes, Max Kaiser. Yes. Thanks for explaining that so eloquently as you do. Now, hi guys, basically, uh, welcome to the channel. Um, I'm just gonna do a quick video at the end of this. Basically, just talking about that, what Max Kaiser basically just said. Because at the end of the day, guys, you know, love him or hate him, I've been watching him for a while. He's a pretty crazy dude, but what he just basically said in those terms is exactly what is basically happening with Bitcoin, with the global economy. And you can't help, you can't argue with him. He's right, what he's saying. Well, in my opinion, it might not be your opinion, but in this video, I'm just gonna quickly go through some of the things I think just basically explain what he's saying in uh, more detail because I think it's really important to understand this. So basically what, Mike, what, what Max Kaiser has just said, he said this. He said that the world is coming off the dollar standard and this is true, guys. Like you look at uh, what's happening in Iran. Iran are trying to get off the dollar because of sanctions. You look at many things happening in the world. Countries which are under sanctions are trying to get off the dollar. That's the first thing. The second thing is a lot of countries which hold a lot of dollars in reserves or whatever it is are trying to get away from it as well they don't really want to be holding stacks of cash anymore and the, and the reason this is is because the u.s government have recently come out and said they're going to be doing um basically an endless quantitative easing they're never going to stop printing more and more dollars so you know if you're a bank or you're uh, a central government or even if you're a normal person who owns dollars in their portfolio you don't really want to be holding them for too long because you're going to get eaten up eventually by inflation and you know we all know what happens with inflation it doesn't really come and sting you today tomorrow or the next day it usually happens when you're not looking and then suddenly you know the currency you've got is devalued so the problem is america is arguably the biggest economy in the world and if you know if america goes down the whole world is going to go down with it so the more people who move away from the dollar standard the worst is going to be for america and then basically most countries sell goods to america and europe of course so that's the first thing we're looking at. People are moving away from the dollar. What are they going to buy? They're probably going to buy gold. And guys, we can see that in the gold price. You know, the price of gold in terms of US dollars. So the amount of US dollars you need to buy one ounce of gold has skyrocketed over the last few months. Uh, actually, less than that over the last few weeks. Uh, it broke out of resistance. We're up at about $1,500 per ounce. And if you look at history, guys, look at look at look at gold. <laughs> look at the price of gold in, in comparison to U.S. dollars in history. The reason it only goes up <laughs> is because 100 years ago, or less, maybe even 60 years ago or 50 years ago, there were a lot less dollars in circulation. The reason there's more currency in circulation today than there used to be is basically because governments use printing capital to pay for things. <laughs> governments use the printing press to allow them to overspend. And that's happened for thousands of years. Governments have been doing it for thousands of years. French Revolution, Roman Empire. Governments like to spend more than they can so they can reap the benefits today and not have to wait for it tomorrow. The issue is we've had a few scares in the economy and you know, that's how it's been it, like cycles, recessions, depressions, they happen over exuberation and pullbacks. But in our most recent past, 2008 is the one which rings in most people's minds because we were around for that one to happen. And let's just be realistic here, guys. The Federal Reserve printed in 95 days the same amount of currency which has been printed in the last 95 years. So imagine this, guys. There's so much more floated currency in the world right now. It doesn't mean that th that currency eventually will come and bite everyone for inflation. It will basically devalue the dollars you have today. And that will have a knock-on effect on all the other currencies because, you know, everything's to the dollar standard. So the dollar goes down, everything else does well. So what I'm saying is, right, it doesn't have to bite you today. It will bite you tomorrow. So basically, people are looking for a safe haven. And when people are buying gold, you know it's a safe haven. And the reason gold's a safe haven, safe haven? <laughs> the reason gold's a safe haven is because no one can manipulate the amount of gold in circulation. 
It's only been about 10,000 new tons of gold mined over the last 5,000 years. And there's about 133,000 tons of gold in circulation, but they think there's probably about 170,000 tons of gold in the earth. But the same thing is, you know, there's, there's, tw there's 21 million Bitcoin, but there's only 17 million circulating. It's the same thing for gold. We can't get access to that. So overall, we know roughly there's 133,000 tons of gold in the world. What that does is it creates hard money and, the, and hard money basically means certainty. You can have certainty that if you buy one ounce of gold, you have a proportion of the 133,000 there are out in, out there in 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 the in the earth in the world circulating and basically no one can manipulate it no one can print gold so it's a safe haven no one no one owns it it's al it's almost like a decentralized form of money there are problems with gold i'll get into that in a second but why bitcoin's so powerful but yeah the, you know, the reason what's going on with gold, the price increase is due to people are worried. They're worried about all this new printed currency. Like if you hold a dollar today and there's a million dollars in circulation, if someone prints a billion dollars, you're gonna get devalued massively. So people are worried about that. And also there's a whole load of other tensions as well. You look at the trade war, you look at Hong Kong, you look at Turkey, Venezuela, Iran. Oh, sanctions. Oh, dude, it's it's a it's a disaster waiting to happen. So people are, people are running into gold because it's a safe haven. Now let's talk about Bitcoin because Max Kaiser put it amazingly. So gold is the sovereign money of the world. For thousands of years, it's been sovereign. No one owns it. Like I just said, it has certainty. It's a great money. It's great money. It has unit of account, medium of exchange. It's divisible, portable, um, fungible, and has store of value. Those six things make gold amazing at money. But <laughs> there's something else on the block and it's called Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is the same as gold. But the great thing about Bitcoin is that it's, it's more portable, it's more divisible, it's a better unit of account, you can move it around faster, and it's got store of value because there's 21 million Bitcoin, no one can change that, just like you can't change the amount of gold. The only way you could make more gold is by exploding a star in a supernova explosion. No one can do that, so we're okay. No one's gonna print gold, no one can print Bitcoin either. So the idea behind Bitcoin is it's hard money, but it's kind of built for the digital age, and gold isn't. Think about this, right? Gold, no one, you don't buy anything with gold. You don't go to a shop and buy something with gold. You don't, you know, you don't give people gold in the street. It, gold actually isn't that good anymore at money. We use more different types of money. We use things like, you know, fiat. We use things like we, we store our money in property. We store our money in value. We store our money in stocks. There's so many other ways of storing value today. Back in the day, it used to just be gold and silver. That's where you store your value, that's what you do. Now there's a whole plethora of different things you can store your wealth in. So gold has kind of been left behind because gold's built for a different era, you know, in my opinion. So potentially this makes Bitcoin even more attractive. And like Max Kaiser just said, what Bitcoin allows you to do is have individual sovereignty. Because with gold, actually, it's not that decentralized, it's good. But the thing about gold is, you know, because it's so difficult to move around, you have to hold gold in a vault. And most of the gold is held in certain vaults around the world, like Fort Knox is a good example. And you have to pay for that. You have guards, all these kind of things. And to actually spend your gold digitally, you need a card, but you never actually really own the gold. So if there was a huge crisis around the world, there is actually no certainty that that company, which you're holding your gold with, couldn't just run off with it. The difference between Bitcoin is it's your keys are like your slice of gold <clears throat> distributed in the network. You own your gold always and it's always kind of on you. So it's, you, don't, you don't have to like, you don't have to have anybody to store your Bitcoin for you. I think in the future there will be ways you store your Bitcoin because people don't want their private key. But there'll be, if you, if you owned five, if you owned a ton of gold, there's no way of you not having to have a third party involved. But with Bitcoin, you could own, uh, so you could own millions of dollars worth of Bitcoin <clears throat> and you could literally carry that around with you wherever you go and no one has to even touch it. You could never do that with million dollars of gold because it's heavy. You have to take weight into account. But Bitcoin doesn't weigh anything. <laughs> Bitcoin's the same as gold, but it's light, free, and easy to move around. So the thing about gold, sorry, the thing about Bitcoin is that you can own your private key, which is your your individual sovereignty on a network. Like, and like, Max, like Max Kaiser put it so well, it's gonna create the, ri the rise of individual sovereignty instead of having institutional sovereignty or government sovereignty. Because you know, at the end of the day, we have to rely on institutions and this technology allows, we don't, we don't have to rely on institutions any further. So it's almost like you, it's, it's, it's actually incredible how far this can go. And I don't think enough people realize this yet. And we're, we're a long way down the line with Bitcoin. <laughs> you know, Bitcoin's been around for a long time. But people are only just coming around to realize this, that we don't want 
we don't really want massive central governments. We don't really need massive central governments. Like they, they, they've done well to get us to where we are today, but we could have different systems which create uh, more like decentralized, broken up governments. And I'm not saying that we're not, we're gonna have a lawless land. Government doesn't mean there's no laws. We could just govern the land differently to having a central government, having some sort of way of having, I don't know, this is, this is another, this is another whole video, <laughs> but the beginning is money and money is what the mo makes the world go round. And at the moment money's broken because it's controlled and there's so much, it, we, 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 I, in my opinion, Bitcoin could bring back true capitalism in a, in a certain way. I think there's always going to be issues because at the moment we, we don't really live in true capitalism. We live in crony capitalism because someone can pull the strings behind the economy. You know, at the end of the day, if we had free market capitalism, interest rates would be decided by the free market. There would be no subsidies. Uh, you know, there wouldn't be any of these social programs forcing this out. It would be a complete open free market. And I, I agree there's some areas we need to have some sort of social plans. I get it. It's not all one way or the other. There's, there's a middle ground, but at the, mo at the moment we're way too far <laughs> into like government control and like the Federal Reserve controlling interest rates, giving subsidies to this company, saying you can do this, you can't do that. Guys, it's way too much and it, and it doesn't create a level playing field. It's crony capitalism. And what happens is some people get a better deal than others and it's, it's just it just doesn't work. Like look what's happening. Like <laughs> as soon as you give the power to one institution to determine an interest rate, for instance, um, it just everything goes to, sh to shit <laughs> basically because at the end of the day no 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 government is, i'm not saying governments are out to get the people but no government or central bank is intelligent enough or smart enough to be able to control an economy in the first place like an economy is such a huge complex machine of like millions of transactions of different people pricing things selling buying goods and services movement of money how can any institution Thank you. It is four o'clock. But yeah, how can any institution control that? It's like um, it's like this, for instance. This is the analogy I give for it. It's like an ecosystem of animals. Such a complex thing. Every single animal is every single animal is actually connected to each other. So it's like this. It's like this is what's happening right now. If you manipulate interest rates of an economy, it's like taking one animal out of an ecosystem. Okay, it might help one certain animal for not getting killed by another animal. But what happens is if you take one animal out of an ecosystem, it actually affects every single other animal indirectly in some way. Because if you give someone, you know, if you give one animal the chance of not to have a predator to kill it, it will then affect what eats that and then eats that and eats that. And it, like the, the spiral goes so far. It's like almost, it will completely change an ecosystem just by one animal. It's exactly the same as trying to manipulate an interest rate in an economy. If you change one little thing, it just affects everything else indirectly, probably negatively. It might help one thing. It might help, oh, okay, now the housing market's better. We've made the housing market better. But then you go and ruin like 15 other industries <laughs> because it's like, it's it's impossible for any human being or any institution or any central party to be able to control an economy. It has to be free market because the free market is nature. Like at the end of the day, um, economies are nature. It's not, it's not, it's not really man-made. Like an economy is, is a natural process of buyers and sellers and movement of money and capital and, you know, whatever it is. Like think about how complex the economy is. It's just ridiculous today. Like, oh my God, it's, you, you cannot even start to explain every single entity within an economy. It's just, it, it is in nature, I think. So basically I'm going on a rant here, but <laughs> what I'm trying to get to is this. Bitcoin can create a different type of way of moving money around the world. It's better than gold in my opinion. We're moving away from the dollar standard. People are wising up. They're saying, look, I don't want to play this game anymore with the dollar. And I get it. The pound used to be, it used to be the pound standard. And people started getting a bit wary with that as well. We need to get back to real money. Real money can change a lot. People don't really understand. The whole economy is built on money, right? <laughs> and we don't have real money anymore. We've got this ridiculous version of money. And let's just go into the price. So basically, yeah, Bitcoin and gold. In my opinion, they're going up in price because there's so many other different ways you can store your value today. You can store your value in so many different things. 401ks, you can buy real estate. You can have like a weird car doing this. You can have like, even hold it in like bonds. You can have, the amount of different things you can store your wealth in today is unbelievable. When those tools begin to fail, because they're not hard and they don't have any sort of fundamentals to them, you're going to see the price of gold and Bitcoin going through the roof. Only my opinion, not financial advice. And the reason is, is because these things are proven for thousands of years. Gold's been proven for 5,000 years. 
Bitcoin has been proven for 5,000 years as well because Bitcoin's basically the same as gold. Just because it's a new technology, it's a new technology which creates consensus with Bitcoin, doesn't mean, doesn't change the economic law of hard money. The, the economic law of hard money is like this. It's a great quote which says, um, gold isn't by nature money, but money is gold by nature. It's like gold is money because of it has hard, hard economic facts to it not because someone decided it. It's like Bitcoin. At the end of the day, the properties Bitcoin has make it money, not someone deciding it. It just is because of the properties it has. But I've been ranting on for ages. Uh, big respect to Max Kaiser. Really like that explanation you did. Uh, and that's all I want to go through. Just get them out there, have a bit of a rant on camera. But yeah, guys, like I always say, uh, like, subscribe, hit the bell if you want to keep getting this kind of content. I will see you in the next video. Have a good day, guys. Cheers.